TD is the complete package. He can run the ball. Davis hand up, first down, Terrell Davis, 45 oh, oh, Look out, goodbye, TD for TD. TD was a great receiver, had great hands. Looks a little, plenty of time. Has a wide open Terrell Davis, first down inside the 10. Breaks the tackle, five, touchdown. Great blocker. <laughs> the best way to describe Terrell Davis is he's the ultimate team player in the ultimate team game. But in 1995, Terrell Davis was just the Denver Broncos' sixth round pick and sixth on the depth chart at running back. Still, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I thought that was the great place to be at the right time. Mike Shanahan just became the head coach of the Broncos and he was the offensive coordinator with the San Francisco 49ers. What I had seen Mike do for Roger Craig I felt that he could definitely do for TD. And that's exactly what happened. Davis earned the starting job his rookie year, and in 14 games, rushed for over 1,000 yards and scored eight touchdowns. Davis is the lone setback. He's going to get it, and he's coming up the middle. He's going to the goal line. Touchdown! Terrell Davis, the rookie! In each of his next three seasons, Davis got even better. A three-touchdown performance in Super Bowl 32 earned him that game's MVP honors. Elway handoff, Davis into the end zone, touchdown! Denver's gonna win it! And in 1998, he became just the fourth player in NFL history to rush for over 2,000 yards. He tackle, he's got it, there it is! And a standing ovation as everybody chants TD. I think what TD did those first four years in the NFL, other than Jim Brown, there's no comparable. He never came off the field. He was a three down back. Knee injuries limited Davis over the next three years, and he retired after the 2001 season. But his success is a testament to quality over quantity, something his agent predicted at the start of his remarkable career. So I'm recruiting TD, bring him to New York. We go to a diner around 10 o'clock at night and we just had a unique chemistry. I was like, I think you, you've got greatness written all over you. I think one day you're gonna be inducted in the Hall of Fame and I would love to do the presentation speech. And he kind of looked at me like I was crazy. And I'm like, no, you got something special and you're gonna show the world. Terrell Davis absolutely positively belongs in the Hall and he belongs in there right now. This is the most ridiculous exclusion probably of all time. You know, I'll say Tom Flores, number one, Terrell Davis, number two. You cannot tell the story of the 1990s without talking about Terrell Davis. Here goes Terrell Davis, big hole, TD, still on his feet, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. You've got to be really, really, really special to be in the Hall of Fame. Terrell Davis, for the years he played, was special. And he is a fabulous player. And yeah, you could throw a guy into that Denver offense and get a good performance, but when it was Clinton Portis, it was a great performance. And when it was Terrell Davis, it was a transcendent, historic performance. What a run by Terrell Davis! How many tackles did he break on that baby? Elway handoff, Davis into the end zone, touchdown! I don't want to make a jest about that Super Bowl 32, but keep in mind, he barely touched the field in the second quarter, and he went for 158 in that one. But the 158 he put up were man-style kind of yards. You've got to go out and measure him and say, was he the best among his peers? Terrell Davis definitely was. It's a crime against football to not have Terrell Davis in the Hall of Fame. He ran right when the Broncos had basically invented their version of the zone blocking scheme. And you look, there were some gigantic holes. Not to take anything away from Terrell Davis, that blocking scheme in that line was also pretty good. That thing was blocked so well by the left side of the offensive line. Terrell Davis, a very good player. In my mind, not a Hall of Famer because of how good that offensive line was for him during that time. Terrell Davis, look at when he's playing. He's playing with Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, 
Jerome Bettis, Curtis Martin, and so on, are in the league at that time, and he is unquestionably, for a three-year period, the best of them. He was one of the best running backs of his era. There is no way that you can keep him out of the Hall of Fame. If it's come down to something where you're like, ah, he didn't play long enough, why is Gale Sayers in the Hall of Fame? Gale Sayers is the prime example. We all know how great Gale Sayers was in the short time in which he played in the National Football League. He tore his ACL, never played again. He's in the Hall of Fame. To me, Terrell Davis belongs in the Hall of Fame because of what he accomplished in the time that he played. That window that Terrell Davis put up, like I say, for about three years is as dominant a run as, uh, as we've seen since probably Earl Campbell. But longevity, I think, is part, is part of it, unless you have a player like Jim Brown or Gale Sayers. As good as TD was, uh, he's not Jim Brown or Gale Sayers, obviously. It's not, not like I'm breaking news here.